The key to evaluating any merger or joint venture is to ask how it will affect consumers. Some combinations may benefit consumers by enabling the deployment of new and better products and services. Others may harm consumers by limiting the choices that are available to them. Sometimes these harms can be limited or completely eliminated through the imposition of conditions, and other times they cannot. So we will inquire this morning about whether synergies will arise from the merger that will confer benefits on consumers, whether there is the potential for consumer harm through lessened access to programming that is available today on NBC Universal, and if there is the potential for consumer harm, whether the merger should be conditioned so as to guard against it. Comcast is the nation's largest multi-channel video programming distributor, the largest residential broadband provider, and third largest home telephone service provider, as well as the owner of a number of cable channels and regional sports networks. As measured by annual revenue, NBC Universal is the nation's fourth largest media and entertainment company. It owns the NBC and Telemundo television networks, television broadcast stations, and many of our nation's largest television markets, cable channels, and a movie studio, as well as an interest in the online video programming provider, Hulu.com. As these facts reveal, the merger, if approved, will substantially transform the media and entertainment marketplace, and it requires very careful scrutiny. That scrutiny boils down, I think, to three basic questions. First, assuming the combination is approved, what benefits will consumers see a year after the merger that <coughs> they do not enjoy today? Secondly, what, if anything, are consumers receiving today that they will not continue to receive a year after the merger is consummated? And finally, are there conditions that regulators should consider imposing on approval of the merger to ensure that it serves consumers? And if so, what are those conditions? I want to thank our panel of distinguished witnesses for their appearance here this morning and for their testimony enlightening our deliberations. I also want to remind the members of our subcommittee that several of our witnesses are scheduled to testify this afternoon in the other body. And uh, we want to make sure that we do not detain them from their appointed rounds. So uh, I would ask that members uh, adhere very closely to our time limitations on opening statements and also during the question period. And I hope that this brief opening statement has set something of an example. Um, I'm pleased at this time to recognize the ranking Republican member of our subcommittee, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Stearns. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, yield to my, uh, the ranking member of the Veterans Committee who has to leave, uh, Mr. Boyer, uh, for a quick I, statement. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding to me, and I'm going to have to waive my opening statement. I want to thank you and the chairman. When I asked for this hearing, I think it's extremely important for all the views to be aired. And I want to thank you for that. I'm going to take off, receive the VA Secretary's testimony, and I plan to return. Very good. Look forward to it. Mr. Chairman, um, obviously this is a very important hearing. Um, the merger between Comcast and NBC Universal is indeed a major transaction that uh, could possibly fundamentally alter the media and entertainment landscape in the United States. It deserves close examination by this subcommittee, our jurisdiction, as well as the Justice Department and the FCC. I'm glad that the CEOs of both Comcast and uh, NBC Universal are here this morning, uh, and I look forward to their testimony and the testimony to the rest of the panel. Um, <clears throat> Comcast, as all of us know, is the nation's largest video programming distributor, and NBC is the nation's fourth largest media and entertainment company. Nevertheless, there is in my opinion, little to suggest that a Comcast NBCU uh, combination would seriously uh, threaten competition in the media entertainment industries. We all know this is a highly competitive segment of the economy, and ultimately consumers stand to benefit. Since NBCU and Comcast do not compete in most segments of the market, 
This deal will not bring about consolidation, so to speak. Comcast has interest in only five wholly owned and six partially owned national cable networks. So together, these networks only represent about 3 percent of national cable network advertising and affiliate revenue. NBC's network represent approximately 9 percent of national <coughs> cable network's advertising and affiliate revenue, giving the combined entity a total of 12 percent. Which, place, which would place it behind Disney, ABC, Time Warner, and Viacom. That's the same position NBC occupies today before the deal, and approximately six out of every seven networks Comcast carries will remain unaffiliated with Comcast or NBC. Now, the idea that Comcast NBU combination or NBC NBCU combination will harm competition is something we're looking at today. I don't think it's a, a, a founded uh, under uh, the data that I've looked at. In fact, such vertical integration will lead to greater innovation and drive more competition in this already competitive market. Moreover, under the prevailing economic view, a firm that does not have market power in either the video distribution or programming markets is no more capable of exerting power, market power simply because it is vertically integrated. As mentioned before, the combined Comcast NBCU will control content representing only 12 percent of the national cable programming market. Were the new venture to unreasonably withhold any of this programming, the combined entity would likely just lose programming revenue as distributors and viewers turn to other alternatives. Indeed, in many cases, viewers might be able to find the identical content from another distributor and perhaps even for free, over the air or over the Internet. And while there is debate whether the program access rules are even needed, if not harm, even need, if not harmful, in light of the level of competition, Section 628 would also limit the combined entity's conduct. Furthermore, and my colleagues, in order to demonstrate the public's interest, benefits that will come from this deal, Comcast and NBCU, have made a number of voluntary commitments in their filings. Among the commitments, they have pledged to continue offering NBC and Telemundo network programming free over the air, to make more local news, public affairs, children's ethnic and other public interest programmings available over the air on cable channels, on demand, and online, and to continue the position of the NBC News omnibus men to ensure journalistic independence from each of the owners. They should be commended for these voluntary uh, commitments. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a word of caution to those who may want to add perhaps unrelated conditions to this merger. For example, proponents of Internet regulation may seek network neutrality, mandates on the Comcast NBCU deal. I think this would be inappropriate. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but it appears that Comcast is, is uh, in court and is near victory on net neutrality in the sense that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia uh, heard the case, uh, heard or oral arguments last month. And the court, in fact, seemed skeptical that the FCC even had legal authority to impose these mandates. One of the judges asked the FCC counsel, quote, whether he wanted to lose on process or jurisdiction, end quote. Unless a condition is narrowly tailored to a transaction, specific harm to competition, it does not belong in this negotiation. Since this deal will not materially increase concentration in either the distribution or programming markets, demonstrating such harm will be difficult, especially in light of the robust competition in the video sector. Mr. Chairman, thank you for holding this hearing. If Comcast and NBCU are right that this deal creates a stronger entity than can be better, that can better serve viewers, I think it will succeed. If they're wrong, it will fail. Just as the AOL Time Warner merger failed, ultimately. As competitive as this market is, regulatory intervention is not only unnecessary, but it will hurt competition and consumers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Stearns. The uh, Chairman of the Full Energy and Commerce Committee, the gentleman from California, Mr. Waxman, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. When the uh, proposed combination of Comcast and NBC was announced last year, I said that this transaction had the potential to shape and reshape the media marketplace 
and raise fundamental questions regarding diversity, competition, and the future of the production and distribution of video content. I urge the FCC and the Department of Justice to assess rigorously whether this transaction is in the public interest. Well, two months have passed since this transaction was announced, and after additional review, I'm now even more certain that this new joint venture, if approved, could trigger dramatic changes in the way consumers access video programming, in the way independent programmers distribute their works, and also in the way all video distributors compete for customers. Given the significance of the uh, proposed joint venture, the committee should examine its implications carefully and dispassionately. We should ask hard questions, but we should also keep an open mind. There could be benefits that flow from this transaction, and I look forward to hearing Mr. Roberts and Mr. Zucker expand on the positive aspects of this deal. For example, will Comcast be a better long-term steward of NBC News than the current owner? Will Comcast be more committed to the development of quality original programming? Will Comcast invest necessary resources to promote localism and diversity and support free over-the-air broadcasting? One important issue is whether Comcast, as the nation's largest residential broadband provider and a potential owner of NBC's valuable content, will help protect the intellectual property. The theft of content online is a serious issue for the creative community. It is unlawful and it is a serious drain on our economy. This problem deserves more attention and better efforts by broadband providers. We also need to know what Comcast will do to ensure that independent writers, directors, and producers won't be harmed. There are many other essential questions. The move to online video and the TV Everywhere model could shape the future of how all customers access the programming. Perhaps sooner rather than later, almost everything we do and see on our television will be just another application writing over a broadband connection. We should ask how Comcast, the nation's largest video programming distributor, will deal with its customers and its competitors as this transition progresses. I believe that the best way to protect consumers is through competition. But will competition be sustainable with the largest video and broadband provider controlling huge quantities of content? There may be plenty of content outside Comcast NBC, but will consumers have the same ability and opportunities to access that content both on and off Comcast distribution platforms as they uh, will content from Comcast. The future of free over-the-air broadcast television is also tested by this transaction. Many are concerned that this transaction could result in the best of NBC's programming being transitioned to pay TV service. Might the Olympics or the Super Bowl one day be available only to paying customers? Will the Comcast NBC joint venture affect local affiliates and the network affiliate model. We must consider how this transaction will impact the coverage of local news and events as well as major televised events of interest to all Americans. There are other issues to examine as well, including Comcast treatment of PEG channels, how this transaction will affect the diversity of voices in the marketplace, and how independent programmers will be impaired. We need to weigh all these topics as this process moves forward and the subcommittee considers related matters. Ultimately, this transaction must be scrutinized with regard to its impact on consumers, the choices they will have in the market, and the bills they will pay. This is the highest consideration required by the public interest re review mandated under the Communications Act. In closing, I want to thank Chairman Boucher for convening this hearing so quickly and I look forward to hearing from our distinguished panel, and I thank them for their participation. Thank you very much, Chairman Waxman. The gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding the hearing, and uh, I would like to wave and reserve. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Terry. The uh, gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Blunt, is recognized for two minutes. 
Uh, thank, thank, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and uh, uh, and uh, our ranking member, Mr. Stearns, for holding this hearing. Um, I have a slightly longer statement for the record, but I'd just like to say, you know, it's often the case in our economy uh, when you're we're going through a period of repositioning uh, and shakeups, and certainly this new joint venture between Comcast and NBC Universal would seem to be another evidence of, of what's happening generally in the economy. I actually understand and I support uh, the necessity of businesses constantly needing to evaluate their market position, constantly figuring out uh, how they reposition themselves to um, provide the best service and to do the best thing for the business they're in. At the same time, uh, as this hearing uh, progresses this morning, I'm very interested uh, in gaining a better understanding of how uh, Comcast and in Comcast NBC, this new entity, will affect uh, the competitive forces in the television marketplace. Um, this joint venture between Comcast and NBC may be as far-reaching as it is intricate, uh, and I look forward to hearing about the various issues like competitive imbalance and market power uh, that something on this level can bring with it. Uh, the chairman's points uh, were points of interest to all of us, the uh, full committee chairman's points that he just expressed. And so I thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing this morning, and uh, I yield back my time. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Blunt. The gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Markey, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. There are significant questions about how consumer choice and competition, innovation, and investment in the media marketplace would be affected by this planned joint venture. There will be discussion this morning and further scrutiny in the months to come of important ramifications of this proposed transaction, including the exercise of market power, higher barriers to entry, and the consequences of vertical integration associated with this proposed transaction, as there should be. Essentially, though, for our constituents, for our consumers across America, the issue really boils down to the seven C's. Will the combination of communications colossi curtail competition and cost consumers? That is the question that must be answered in as this process moves forward. While Comcast and NBC University, uh, Universal have determined that this transaction advances their business interests, it is essential that the public interest also be served. As the author of the Internet Freedom Preservation Act to ensure network neutrality, along with Chairman Waxman and Congresswoman Anna Eshoo, I want to ensure that the combination of a major network operator and a large content owner does not enable the creation of discriminatory fast lanes and slow lanes on the Internet to the detriment of consumers. I am also concerned about how this proposed joint venture would impact the emerging online video marketplace now and in the future. As consumers increasingly utilize their broadband connections to access online video content, control of both the content itself and the conduit through which it is delivered raises important issues with respect to competition, choice, diversity, and innovation. Today's hearing is an important uh, opportunity to uh, raise and hopefully answer these questions. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for thank you uh, for very much, Mr. This hearing. Thank you, Mr. Markey. The gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Shemkus, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and I want to thank the witnesses. I know it's uh, difficult to get here, especially during the proceedings and all the um, machinations that are going on in the merger. But we appreciate it. The, uh, there are many different issues that we'll be dealing with today, and I just want to make it pretty clear. I do not want the Department of Justice enacting tel uh, uh, policy, legislative policy. That's our job, and I would be careful for members to uh, another way giving up our responsibilities on telecom policy by enacting processes and procedures and using this and the Department of Justice to, to do that. So um, that's kind of where I stand. A profitable NBC Universal is good for all of our constituents, and I hope that this venture between Comcast and NBC will facilitate the creation of more popular programming choices for all Americans. One of the great exports our country has is our media. American films and television shows are one of the ways we reach cultures throughout the world. And I also uh, not not sure that's always a good reach of culture, and I do question some of the 
things our consumers like to watch and what we do sell abroad, and I think it does sometimes not put the best focus on us as a culture and the greatness of our country. But having said that, I do believe that the market rules and the market does uh, have a, a place for that, and that does, uh, uh, is a great export. So I appreciate you all being here. I know it's uh, tough and challenging times, and I look forward to working with you all in the future. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Shemkus. The gentlelady from California, Ms. Eshoo, is recognized for two minutes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for scheduling this hearing uh, at the onset of the merger review process so that we can gauge uh, the potential effects of this transaction and weigh in with our concerns before the agencies begin uh, their analyses. Uh, the Comcast uh, NBC Universal merger will affect millions of people, many of them obviously in my own district. Uh, Comcast has 24 million um, cable subscribers and 16 million broadband uh, subscribers nationwide. NBC Universal produces and distributes broad swaths of entertainment programming. Like any merger, this uh, transaction could produce beneficial synergies. Comcast's FCC filing spells out a sincere commitment uh, to the public interest, but having a philosophical commitment to protect consumers is far different than having a legal obligation to do so. Telecommunications uh, mega mergers, as well as those in other industry sectors, have the potential to create mon uh, monopolistic titans. The Department of Justice will ensure that this merger doesn't violate our antitrust laws. But the FCC has a special burden. It must also ensure that this merger protects the public interest. The Comcast NBC Universal merger is not just about the purchase and sale of private businesses. It involves the transfer of public property, broadcast licenses to operate on America's spectrum. Just as importantly, if left unchecked, this merger has the potential to place a chokehold on the transfer of information on the Internet to consumers today and well into the future. If anything, this proposed merger, I think, demonstrates why we need net neutrality across the board. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing for us to weigh in uh, um, before the other agencies do, and uh, I look forward to hearing the diverse uh, viewpoints of the witnesses here today. I uh, uh, especially would like to welcome um, uh, the representatives from, uh, from Comcast, uh, whose father uh, established the company some 47 years ago. I think it's 47 years ago. It's um, uh, really a, uh, an amazing American story. Uh, that in uh, four plus decades, um, that a company that uh, uh, was born with a great idea uh, is what it is today. And so I congratulate you and uh, I look forward to the testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Eshoo. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Rogers, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you having this hearing. Uh, and thank you for your testimony today. I think it's an incredibly important issue. And as the, as the proposed merger, uh, I hope is fully reviewed and, and done diligently by the FCC and the Department of Justice. Uh, the one concern that I have, Mr. Chairman, are there, there, there's no timelines uh, for either approval or rejection. Uh, and so it is my hope, uh, given the amount of expense uh, and I think what is at stake, uh, that they will not only be diligent, but they'll be quick uh, in their decision uh, as they move forward in the merger. Uh, and I'm sure they can accomplish both. I just uh, hope they know that uh, what's at stake for a long timeline. I, I think that's probably not helpful to anybody either, whatever their outcome is. Uh, and the other issue I hope that we get uh, discussed uh, at some length is the retransmission consent agreements. Uh, the law and regulations governing them were created nearly 20 years ago, uh, and this committee should take a look to see if there's any changes that need to be made. I, there's so much, again, at stake at this when you talk about market power and content and who controls what in the spectrum. Uh, lots at stake. Uh, for the American public. So I hope that we'll have that opportunity to discuss it. Uh, and to my friends at NBC, I have an opening for a constituent humorist specialist. If uh, Conan would call my office, we could probably arrange to help you all out in any way that we could possibly do that. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Rogers. The uh, gentleman from uh, Michigan, Mr. Dingell, Chairman Emeritus of the full committee, is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your courtesy. 
and I commend you for having this hearing. I believe it's important that we should go into these matters with a great deal of care, and I'm hopeful we'll get the answers for which we have need. I also would suggest if we may not have quite enough time this morning to hear from all of our witnesses to get the, interest, get the answers that this committee needs. I would also observe that it may be necessary for us to hear from the regulatory agencies, which I believe we can do in a way that would not constitute a problem or potential violations of the Pillsbury rule. I do extend an ex a warm welcome to our witnesses today, especially my old friends, Brian and Ralph Roberts, as well as Colleen Abdullah, whose companies provide cable service in my district. I also want to thank Comcast for its cooperation in the recent uh, resolution of the PEG issue in Dearborn, Michigan, and I want you to know of my appreciation in that matter. The competitive incentives behind the proposed venture between Comcast and NBC Universal are quite unambiguous. In a world of fragmented viewing audiences created by proliferation of video service providers, Comcast and NBC Universal's proposed partnership does make quite a lot of sense. Consolidated control of content and distribution will help Comcast to become a more competitive player in the multi-channel video marketplace. At the same time, by virtue of the magnitude of the transaction, the Comcast NBCU proposed joint venture raises legitimate concerns about the new entity's leverage vis-a-vis -vis existing competitors and consumers, control of content, and its distribution in the general media consolidation. We're, we will be interested in how this will impact on government, the industry, and also on the consuming public. Moreover, as I've heard a lot about internet video and how it may well be the future of television, I look forward to hearing from the witnesses about online video, how they see it developing, developing and whether this deal would impact it and how. To summarize, while I understand the motivation behind the joint venture proposal pending the committee's consideration, I have concerns about its effect on the public interest. In particular, I'm going to be asking witnesses to respond to questions about commitments from Comcast and NBC Universal to ensure the following in the future. Editorial neutrality on network news. This is something which we have some small problems with in this country. Local access to free over-the-air broadcast television, a matter of great concern to me over the many years. Fair access for content distributors and consumers to programming provided via online video services and collecting bar collective bargaining rights of employees. This is by no means a complete list of concerns, but I think it is a good place to start. I would add also my desire to hear from the federal regulators about this matter, and I believe we need to have their input in order to have a proper understanding of the circumstances. While I understand they cannot com comment on the pending merger, their input on facts and the general principles would be most helpful in helping us and the public to understand the situation before us. In closing, I look forward to a frank discussion with our witnesses today. Mr. Chairman, I commend you for this hearing, and I thank you for your courtesy, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much, Chairman Dingell. The ranking member of the full committee, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Barden, is recognized for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, want to welcome back two of my colleagues from the committee. They're sitting side by side out in the audience. I hope you're on the same side. You may be on opposite sides on this, but we're glad to, glad to have my two good friends back. Glad to have all our friends at the witness table. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's good to see NBC and Comcast sitting side by side. That, that doesn't break my heart. Um, I think it's important and appropriate that we, uh, we hold this hearing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this type of a merger should be examined by this committee and subcommittee. and uh, should be um, reviewed by the, uh, by the people uh, uh, of the United States. Having said that, uh, I hope today's hearing is level-headed and really focused on the, uh, 
on the issues and the details of the of the merger and 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 not on some uh, uh, what if discussion about what might happen if this and that were to occur as we all know back in December Comcast and General Electric announced this this um, this merger or this I guess you'd say sale to combine the broadcasting cable programming movie studio theme park and online content businesses of NBC Universal with the cable programming and certain online content of Comcast. Uh, as I understand it, Comcast is going to purchase 51 percent of NBC Universal. General Electric will still retain uh, 49 percent. Since the merger or, or since the uh, sale has been announced, uh, we've heard some of the usual predictions that this is the end of the media world as we know it. Um, put me down as skeptical on that. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I hope good things happen for the viewers and the, and the folks that provide the content to the media. Um, but let's let the market make those decisions. We should allow companies to take risks. We should allow companies to seek out niche markets. We should allow companies to use their natural and competitive advantages uh, to serve up material uh, for the marketplace of, of various interests. It's a testament to our system that even in these in uncertain economic times, there are people, some of them are at this table, that are willing to take such market risk. There are some analysts that have expressed doubts about the economic case for the Comcast NBC deal precisely because they don't see that a competitive advantage will materialize uh, from this, uh, this combination. So instead of condemning such an effort, uh, we should stand back and watch it and hopefully be willing to applaud if, in fact, good things happen uh, for the uh, markets that both NBC and Comcast serve at the current time. There don't appear to be any major overlaps in the markets. Uh, there do appear to be some synergies from the two companies coming together. There's certainly no antitrust. Um, implications in the classic sense, because it's my understanding uh, that the Justice Department is not going to review it uh, for antitrust uh, under the classic antitrust review. Uh, to the extent that concerns exist, uh, Comcast has said that it will make a number of voluntary commitments to help assuage these anxieties. Uh, they plan to honor and extend the current program access rules. They will continue to offer NBC and Telemundo network programming free over the air rather than turn them into cable networks. And they also plan to add new independently owned channels to their cable lineup. Furthermore, more local news, local public affairs, children's, ethnics, and other public interest programming um, is planned to be made available over the air on cable channels through on-demand service and on online. And so, Again, Mr. Chairman, thank you for holding the hearing. Thank all of our witnesses. I uh, look forward to uh, an interesting exchange today. Thank you very much, Mr. Barton. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Gordon, is recognized for two minutes. Uh, he is no longer with us. The, uh, the gentleman from Washington State, Mr. Ensley, is recognized for two minutes. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We're here to talk about uh, control of America's most precious uh, asset, and that, of course, is Tina Fey. And um, that's one of the reasons we are so interested in this issue. I, I do want to suggest something, though, as we look through these issues, the potential upsides for consumers and the potential concerns for consumers, and I think there are, there are both those potentials. Uh, I would suggest that we need to look at it a little bit through the, through the uh, lens of democracy, not just commercial activity. And I'll just throw in a little Jefferson who said, where the press is free and every man able to read, all is safe. And I think in today's electronic world, the modern corollary, corollary is that where content is freely available and every man and woman able to watch, all is safe. And I think there is a democracy issue here that, that, that ought to be considered, and we'll look forward to everyone giving us their views in that regard. And in that regard, I think there are three fundamental questions I hope the witnesses will address. One, in the new, in the new world where we are developing internet-based systems, 
such as Hulu and iTunes, networks like Comedy Central, where people are going online where we do not have programming rules, how do we intend to assure access to Americans in that sort of Jeff Jeff Jefferson's Jeffersonian ideal? Uh, we know that the cable industry is realizing the market dynamic in this is evidenced by the recent announcement of TV everywhere. And I would hope the witnesses will tell us how can we assure that access to, uh, to important content in that new, um, in that new system. Uh, second, um, although this merger is only between two companies, uh, um, I would ask the witnesses to tell us if they think we ought to look at our, our transmission access rules in general on how they're working or not working, are there ways that we can make them more usable to both parties to try to determine how to make it work for both parties in a way that is not so costly and, and gives consumers more credibility uh, or more confidence in the system? And third is cost, which is an obvious one. Um, rates have gone up, I'm told, three times the rate of inflation. Consumers are going to have obvious concerns about that, and we hope, obviously, you all will address that. But uh, we'll look forward to this hearing uh, from all parties, and thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Ensley. The gentlelady from California, Ms. Bonomack, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank you and Ranking Member Stearns uh, and the distinguished panel for being here today. I think this is an important hearing as well. As I see it, the proposed transaction between Comcast and NBC is an example of vertical integration within the media marketplace. The proposal is a marriage of upstream and downstream companies that do not significantly compete against one another. Now, I'm sure we will hear opinions that attempt to label this transaction as horizontal integration. While I respect the right of everyone to have their own opinion, we are not entitled to our own set of facts. And in that vein, I remain unconvinced of how the combination of two entities, where one concentrates on the distribution of content and the other concentrates on the development of content, can be determined to be anything other than a case of vertical integration. I'll admit that there are certain aspects of the transaction that are of particular interest to me. For instance, I would like to hear how independent programmers are going to be impacted by this deal. I'm sure others have certain questions as well, and they are entitled. However, if we use this hearing as an opportunity to cast blame and air grievances about every problem we perceive in the communications or media marketplace, we will have wasted everyone's time. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, this transaction should not be used as a vehicle to advance a specific policy agenda that is unrelated to the matter at hand and cannot be implemented on the industry as a whole. It is my hope that these types of regulatory uh, shenanigans have no place at the new FEC. Uh, FCC, excuse me. At the moment, I have no reason to associate that type of behavior with this chairman or commission. With that, I yield back my time, and I thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Bonomack. The gentlelady from California, Ms. Matsui, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, witnesses, for being here today. Like other major mergers or joint ventures, there will be a real impact on consumers and the marketplace, and this one is really no different. Comcast is a dominant cable provider in my hometown of Sacramento, providing service to over 200,000 households. This joint venture will only enlarge the footprint in Sacramento. Over the last few days, I've received numerous emails from my constitu constituents wanting to know what this deal would mean for them. They want to know if it means higher cable rates. They want to know if they'll be able to continue to receive independent programming they're used to without any unwarranted interference or preference. They want to know what it would mean for the distribution of online video, and they want to ensure it continues to be open to all and is preserved so that they can view their favorite programs when they choose. They want to know the ramifications of this joint venture, what it may cause within the industry. Will there be a domino effect whereby Comcast competitors are likely to combine or merge with others in order to compete in the marketplace, creating a media and entertainment environment where only a few will be heard. Additionally, the people of Sacramento rely on local affiliate stations for local news and information. Would this merger put local NBC affiliates, not currently owned by NBC itself, at a competitive disadvantage from a programming standpoint? I recognize that Comcast has made a series of proactive commitments on some of these subjects. I look forward to further exploration of these and other concerns today and in the weeks and months ahead. Ultimately, I believe that this proposed merger should not leave consumers without less choice, lower quality, 
less diversity, and higher programming costs. As the FCC and Department of Justice review the proposed merger, it is my hope that they consider every aspect, particularly its impact on consumers, competition, and innovation. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for calling this hearing today. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much, Ms. Matsui. The gentlelady from Tennessee, Ms. Blackburn, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to welcome all of our guests today, and I certainly am looking forward to a discussion with you as we, as we move through the day. I've read through your statements, and I will tell you, it is absolutely puzzling and amusing to me that such intelligent people, when given the same set of statistics and the same information and the same data, can arrive at such vastly different opinions and uh, such conclusions as to how this union would affect uh, telecommunications moving forward. So I think we're going to have a rather robust discussion today, and I am truly looking forward to it. Um, I will tell you at first glance that um, my reaction is that if this deal results in no additional market power in content and no additional market power in distribution, then why are there such concerns about antitrust violations? And that's the point I want to discuss with all of you. And if this deal does not increase any market share, then I cannot accept the suggestions that we need to put conditions on it. So uh, let's uh, discuss that as we move forward. We want to make certain that we're doing things that are good for consumers. And being from Tennessee and having the number of content, independent uh, content producers that we have there, we're very concerned about what this would do to access and to content. And for those of you that hold an opposing view on the antitrust violations, I want to hear from you as to how you have read the same set of material and data and arrived at other uh, outcomes from that. So looking forward to the discussion. Thank you for being here. I yield back. Thank you, uh, Ms. Blackburn. The gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Murphy, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for holding this hearing, and I agree with Ms. Blackburn that we are going to have a lively debate. I hope that the panel will spend some time addressing one issue that Chairman Waxman raised, and that's the issue of content protection and how this transaction may affect how we deal with protecting the copyrights of content innovators. We know the statistics each year. Our nation's content industry is losing hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars to online piracy. And up until now, however, the largest distributors of that content and the largest providers of that content have largely been separate entities. And this new relationship between Comcast and NBC Universal is going to change that dynamic fundamentally. If approved, as mentioned before, this deal represents the nation's largest broadband provider combining with the nation's fourth largest entertainment company. The problem is, is that historically too often content providers and content distributors just aren't on the same page with respect to a strategy for combating online piracy. And often this lack of cooperation has simply to do with the disparate economic goals of all the parties that are involved. However, the ramifications of this issue are too great to ignore. And I think the current events surrounding us today, namely the FCC's open internet rulemaking and today's examination of this new business relationship, provide us with an opportunity to explore what steps need to be taken to ensure that we continue to deal with the theft of content that's hurting some of our nation's most innovative job creators. I look forward to this hearing today, and I look forward to hearing a discussion about how the combination of these two new entities may change Comcast's approach to dealing with the unlawful content flowing across its network. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the balance. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Upton, is recognized for two minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to welcome all of our witnesses, but particularly to a good friend who's sitting behind Brian, and that is his dad, Ralph, uh, who I see here, he, see here in the audience. It's good to see you, and I appreciate all that you've done. Uh, today, we're examining the proposed merger of Comcast and NBC, and I am encouraged by the many voluntary commitments being made by Compact, Comcast as a part of this merger, and I welcome the evaluation of the merger and the potential impact on the video programming in the broadband marketplace. However, I hope and expect a quick review and approval. Now, all parties involved will be best served as if this is a prompt process. 
I believe that the merger is in the public interest and should bring greater competition to the programming and distribution markets. One of the most interesting points about the deal is that Comcast and NBC have very little overlap. The combined entity will be a more diverse company and will be in a better position to succeed during these very difficult economic times. And that would not necessarily be the case if another entity purchased NBC from GE. I'd like to stress that the merger shouldn't be used as an opportunity to push unrelated policy agendas or extend unnecessary regulations that don't extend to the broader market. For example, I would strongly oppose any efforts to impose network neutrality conditions as part of the deal. Doing so would be highly inappropriate. I yield back the balance of my time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Upton. The gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Castor, for two minutes. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Chairman Boucher, for calling the hearing. I'll waive my opening statement so I have more time for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Castor. The uh, gentleman from California, Mr. McNerney, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to say the biggest concerns about the merger, I think, were well articulated by the chairman of the full committee and others. Uh, so given that, the questions uh, of the proposed venture come down to a couple of things. Uh, will the merger enhance or will it impede competition? Will it enhance or will it impede access? Will it enhance or will it impede diversity of programming? And finally, how will it impact the cost on the consumer? Uh, hopefully we can begin to answer these questions this morning, and uh, I look forward to the testimony. Thank you, Mr. McNerney. The uh, gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Melanson, is recognized for two minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll waive my opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Melanson. The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Space, is recognized for two minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you for uh, convening this hearing uh, today. I believe this is the first kind uh, of uh, our subcommittee in this Congress, and uh, we'll be discussing some critical issues that may influence the future of uh, video programming and distribution for some time to come. Uh, I represent a very rural district in southeastern Ohio. Uh, it's part of uh, five broadcasting markets, and uh, many of my constituents, in fact, much more than the uh, national average, rely upon free, over-the-air broadcasting for emergency information, for news, for weather, for sports. And with the national broadband plan set to come out next month and the debate about spectrum on everyone's minds, there are certainly many challenges facing the free over-the-air broadcast model. Uh, but a strong, strong, vibrant broadcast television industry is important to my constituents, so I'm very interested to hear what our witnesses have to say today regarding the future of free over-the-air television. I'm also interested in learning more about how the joint venture will impact the continued expansion in deployment of broadband, uh, which is uh, an issue of high priority for me personally and certainly for my constituents as well. Uh, so I'd like to welcome our witnesses and thank them for their testimony. And again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Space. The gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Butterfield, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this very important hearing. Thank the witnesses for their testimony today. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this historic coming together of two unique media powerhouses presents the potential for expanded entertainment opportunities and an increase in choice for our television viewers. The proposed joint venture between these two companies creates a new uh, uh, NBCU, a leading communications and entertainment company. Uh, this is a transaction that should receive a fair uh, but intensely thorough review uh, by the Justice Department and the FCC. I am hopeful that both DOJ and the FCC will see that the vertical integration of Comcast and NBC Universal will ultimately prove to be in the public interest, uh, whereby competition and innovation will be fostered. It is vitally important for NBC to, to maintain their editorial independence. We have heard other members speak to that today uh, with respect to how they report the news as well as other content that will be viewed by millions of Americans. I am confident that NBC will continue to operate with the same neutrality that we see today. Uh, it is in the best interest of Comcast and NBC uh, to report the news with objectivity uh, because, all, as we all know, if people do not like what they are watching, they can simply change the channel. As was the case with the XM Cirrus merger, uh, I remain committed to ensuring minority programming has a home and a voice. I'm pleased to see the commitment to increasing the diversity of programming across the spectrum of audiences and viewpoints and across all media platforms. Comcast already has a strong record in program diversity. I thank you for that. 
uh, having entered into a venture with Radio One to create TV One. Uh, but continued recognition of the value of diverse programming is always welcome. I also believe that Comcast's approach of leveraging diverse content across multiple media platforms to increase the programming's reach and its prospect for success have proven effective. Finally, I would like to commend these two companies for their proactive outreach uh, to members of this body. Thank you for the visit that you uh, had with my office recently. And with that, my time has expired, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Butterfield. The uh, gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Shattig, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing. I'd also like to thank the witnesses uh, for spending time with us this morning. As a supporter of the free market uh, and competition, I also support this joint venture. I support the right of two companies, big or small, to enter into a contract and to negotiate a deal that has the potential to inspire innovation and benefit consumers. Although the authority to approve this joint venture lies within the hands of the FCC and the Department of Justice, by having this hearing we are opening up the debate of this merger to the public. I applaud this form of transparency. In addition, I believe our discussion and the investigation by the FCC and DOJ should be thorough and complete. However, it is critical that opponents to this joint venture do not deliberately slow the process down, as that will prove to be costly and unfair to the parties involved. It would be a disservice to all consumers if lengthy investigations and unfair treatment deterred business from entering into negotiations. The purpose of anti-monopoly laws is to ensure that one company does not dominate a market by unfair practices, not to discourage companies from making advances to get ahead. With this joint venture, when this joint venture is complete, NBCU will be 100 percent an American-owned company. We should not discourage this. Although there is some concern that this merger will eliminate competition, I think otherwise. I believe it will inspire competition. This is the innovation that our country needs, and it will create the jobs our country needs. I would like to thank NBC and Comcast for their many voluntary public interest commitments in the course of this process. These commitments show that not only are they not attempting to take advantage of their competitors, but instead respect many of the long-standing agreements that are in place. These are commitments along with these commitments along with the fact that Comcast will not have a large market share by joining forces with NBC. A larger market share by joining forces with NBC is evidence that this joint venture will not hinder competition but will benefit consumers. I look forward to hearing all from all of the witnesses today and playing an active role in the debate surrounding this merger. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. Thank you very much, Mr. Shattig. The gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Rush, is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for convening today's hearing to consider this matter that is before us. Uh, Comcast and GE, uh, the, these parties have argued in recent filings with the FCC and presumably with the Department of Justice that their union is a classic model of vertical integration. They contend the proposed combination will also advance key congressional policy goals of diversity, localism, innovation, and competition. To underscore their claims, Comcast and NBC have offered up a number of a, a voluntary commitments. They say these commit commitments would expand consumer choice, ensure over-the-air broadcasting, <coughs> enhance programming opportunities, ensure competition on multiple content delivery platforms, and maintains NBC's journalistic independence as a provider of news. Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, what they have not said, what they have not committed to, and it was what is not making news, is how this deal will promote meaningful opportunities for minorities to become FCC licensees and owners of communications and programming assets. How will minority viewers, existing minority licenses, and programs be affected uh, by this combination? How will minority suppliers and advertisers be integrated into the joint ventures procurement and purchasing channels? And what will these two Fortune, 500, five, Fortune 100 companies due to ensure greater diversity in hiring, training, and retaining minority employees at both management and non-management levels of the proposed joint venture. These are the types of integration and diversity to which I hope that Comcast and GE will pay more attention to and make further commitments. 
Although the potential rewards for the public are significant, the collective risk to minority inclusion and diversity as this transaction is currently structured are just as important. As we continue to discuss the merits and effects of this proposed combina combination in the coming months, you can be assured that these will be my key areas of focus. I look forward to the hearing and, and perspectives of our witnesses, and I want to welcome each and every one of the witnesses, and I thank you for participating this morning. Mr. Chairman, with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Rush. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Stupak, is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'll wave and ask for extra time for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Stupak. And the uh, gentleman from Vermont, Mr. Welch, is recognized for two minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, being from Vermont, a rural state, uh, at the end of the line are customers who are primarily going to be concerned about their bill and about their access and about what programs they get. And the question that I will be very eager to get commentary on, particularly from Comcast, is what will be the relationships that the larger provider has with the smaller carriers. And the, 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 there seems to be a, a bit of an internal conflict, because on the one hand, a larger carrier, and this is not precipitated just by this merger. There are other questions there, but it raises the issue. There's a bit of a conflict where the larger carrier is dependent on the local carriers to provide that content to the customers. On the one hand, uh, it's in the interest of the larger carrier, whether it's Comcast or anyone else, to get the best price possible. Uh, it's in the interest of the consumer to pay the lowest price possible. And the, the local carrier, and we have these in Vermont, is caught in between. Uh, and my concern is that there be mechanisms that provide for fair uh, negotiation and interaction between the smaller carrier and then the larger carrier as well. Because at the end of the day, it's the customer uh, who gets whacked on this. Uh, and it's a very, very serious issue, obviously, for the customer, uh, but also for, the, uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the media companies that are involved. Uh, and that needs more attention than it's been getting. It's not specifically related to the merger, but it's a moment of opportunity for us to examine this. And it's very important to individual Vermonters and individual Americans uh, who really do need the services that are being provided by all of you. So thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Welsh, and thanks to all members for their statements. We have a series of recorded votes pending on the floor of the House, uh, five of them in total, which uh, will take us somewhere between one half hour and 45 minutes, we would estimate, uh, to complete. And so uh, pending the completion of these votes, the subcommittee stands in recess. I, I would ask our witnesses to remain close at hand. And as soon as we can return, we shall do so and proceed with your opening statements.
House Commerce Subcommittee taking a break on the uh, hearing here on the proposed merger between Comcast and NBC. They're taking a break break because there are a number of votes on the House floor. We'll have live coverage of the hearing when it resumes. In the meantime, a look at an event from earlier this week. First Lady Michelle Obama has taken on the issue of childhood obesity. On Tuesday, she hosted a meeting on the subject with cabinet secretaries and members of Congress. They spoke with reporters afterwards for about 10 minutes. Well, let you, we, let's, let's begin, um, or, or briefly begin, while we have our visitors here. But I want to begin just by thanking you all for taking the time.